cloud computing technology is spreading through IT sphere like a wildfire. And the top three providers of this cloud computing technology are Amazon Web Services, Microsoft Azure, and Google Cloud Platform. Choosing one amongst these top contenders is always a difficult task. Hey guys, I'm Archana from Edureka. Today, we'll be comparing these three powerful cloud platforms and see how they stack up against each other. So let's get started. Before we dig in, here's the quick intro. Amazon Web Services was established in year 2006. With 12 years of experience, it's the most popular player in the market. It offers wide range of services across storage, compute, analytics, database, and many other fields. And like six to seven years after AWS, Azure was launched by Microsoft. Though it's way younger compared to AWS, it has quickly built a reputation for itself in the market. And just like AWS, it offers complete set of cloud services. And in the same year as Microsoft Azure, Google Cloud Platform was launched as well. The main reason of introducing GCP was to power their own services like YouTube and Google Search. But later on, they built enterprise cloud services as well. So you can say that Google Cloud Platform is still an evolving cloud computing platform. Now that we have an idea of foundation of these cloud providers, let's see where they stand in terms of market share. So here's the snippet of media interpretation, and you need to keep in mind that this information is with respect to first quarter of 2018. So Amazon Web Services delivered a 49% increase in sales, that is up to $5.44 billion. Then Microsoft Azure showed an increase of 17%, that's up to $7.9 billion. And Alphabet, Google's parent company said that the division, which had GCP along with other services like Google Hardware and Google App Store, saw a revenue growth of 36%. That's up to $4.5 billion. And with all the stats, I can confidently say that Amazon Web Services is still in the lead and holds lion's share of market. So if I have to tell that in form of numbers, then Amazon holds 33%, that's almost about one third of the total market, then we have Microsoft, which holds about 13%, and finally Google, which holds about 6%. So to conclude, Amazon Web Services market share is bigger than its next two largest competitors combined together. Now that we know who leads the market, let's compare these cloud providers based on the services they offer. So first, let's consider compute services. The compute services offered by all these three cloud providers are equally powerful and yet unique in their own way. Amazon's primary compute service is EC2, which is Elastic Cloud Compute. As for the Microsoft, its primary compute service is known as Virtual Machine. Unlike Amazon's EC2, this Virtual Machine provides enhanced security, hybrid cloud capabilities, and integrated support for Microsoft software. Similar to Amazon's EC2 and Microsoft Azure's Virtual Machine, Google Cloud Platform offers Compute Engine. This compute engine offers automatic price discounts and it runs on an infrastructure that uses half the energy of typical data center. Well, that's about the primary compute services. Now let's take a look at additional compute services. I'm sure you know that all these cloud providers provide a combination of IaaS, PaaS, and SaaS services. But to say platform as a service is strong suit of Microsoft. So Microsoft Azure offers Azure cloud services using which you can easily deploy, scale, and run an application on cloud. Amazon's Elastic Beanstalk and Google's Google App Engine are similar to this Azure cloud services. Moving on, let's say you want to deploy a virtual private server without bothering about the underlying infrastructure, then Amazon Lightsail is the best option. Similar to Amazon Lightsail, Microsoft Azure offers virtual machine engine, and Google Cloud Platform has yet to launch one such similar service. So all these cloud providers also support container platform and they offer their own unique serverless computing services as well. To conclude, in terms of compute, all the three cloud providers offer equally powerful compute services. And yet, I can say that Google Cloud Platform is still lagging behind in some areas. Now moving on to storage services. AWS offers a long list of storage services. To name some, it offers simple storage service, Elastic Block Storage and Elastic File Storage. Talking about database options, it offers Amazon Aurora, a high-performance relational database, Amazon RDS, and DynamoDB, managed NoSQL database. AWS also offers a cloud-based data warehouse, which we know as Amazon Redshift. Though it doesn't offer a backup service per se, it offers Amazon Glacier for long-term archival storage at very low rates. 
Then talking about Microsoft Azure, it offers way more storage services than compared to AWS. And just for the basic storage, it offers four options. And for database, it offers six to five options. And like AWS, it also offers cloud-based data warehouse, which we call Azure Data Warehouse. And unlike AWS, Microsoft offers an actual backup service called Azure Backup. In addition to this Azure Backup, it also offers site recovery and archival storage. A final contender Google Cloud Platform, when compared to AWS and Microsoft Azure, offers less number of storage services. But the storage services like Cloud Spanner and Cloud Bigtable are quite popular. And it doesn't offer backup or any archival storage service. So in terms of storage, Amazon Web Services and Microsoft Azure stand neck to neck, whereas Google Cloud Platform has still long way to catch up with Amazon and Azure. All these vendors are actively launching services aimed at cutting edge technologies like serverless computing, machine learning, analytics, and IoT. If you're talking about Amazon Web Services, it offers Athena and QuickSight using which you can get data insights. It also offers a machine learning service called SageMaker and Lex using which you can build voice and text chatbots. And as for the IoT devices, it offers GreenGas IoT messaging app. And as for Microsoft, it has invested heavily in artificial intelligence and it offers a machine learning service called ML Studio and a bot service called Azure Bot Service. In addition to this, it also offers cognitive services like Bing Search API, Text Analytics API, Computer Vision API and many other services. And then Google. Google Cloud Platform is known for its analytical background. I'm sure you might have heard of a service called BigQuery that enables interactive analysis of massively large data sets. In addition to all this, it also offers IoT and serverless computing services, but still they are in beta version though. One of the major benefits of most cloud providers is their competitive pricing strategies. And all these three cloud providers follow pay as you go model. It means you need to pay on the basis of usage. Wherein Amazon charges you on hourly basis, Microsoft Azure and Google Cloud Platform charge you on minute basis. And all these three cloud providers offer you on demand pricing, that is the standard price you pay when you access their services. And then, in addition to that, Amazon also offers you spot instances, reserved instances, and dedicated hosts, where you are liable to get certain discounts based on some conditions. Then, as for Azure, it offers special price for developers and something called Azure Hybrid Benefit. Suppose your organization runs some sort of Microsoft software on its own data center, then using this Azure Hybrid Benefit, you can get 40% discount depending on the type of Microsoft software you're using. And as for Google, it offers customer friendly pricing compared to Azure and Amazon Web Services. It offers different type of discounts. To name some, you have sustained use discount. These type of discounts usually kick in automatically when you keep using same instance for most part of the month. Then you have preemptible instances, which is similar to Amazon spot instances. And one more thing is that all these three cloud providers offer you long term discounts. So if I have to conclude, Google Cloud Platform is almost always the lowest class provider. Then you have Azure, the second least expensive, and its prices are usually close to Amazon's. And if you are looking for long term discounts, as in Amazon Web Services is the best option. The big takeaway here is that you won't know which vendor is least expensive until you know what you need with this cloud providers. So now that we've looked at the features and pricing, let's see which one of these cloud providers are easy to get started with. So any guesses? Well, if you're guessing AWS, it's right. AWS provides this nice and easy page to start using their services. You can see that they break it down by platform you want to work on. So whether you're making an iOS app or writing in PHP, they provide you some sample code so that you can easily get started with. And as for Microsoft Azure and Google Cloud Platform, the segregation of services here is not that great when compared to AWS. That's mostly because they are less experienced so you need some getting used to before you feel comfortable to start using their services. So there you go guys, we've compared all these cloud providers based on their market share, features, pricing and implementation. To conclude, Amazon Web Services still remains to be the most popular cloud provider, mostly because of the seven years head start it has over its competitors. And AWS services are far more evolved and functionally rich when compared to other services. It has its weak points as well. It doesn't support hybrid cloud strategy. And its counterpart, Microsoft Azure, though it was launched several years after AWS, it's doing fairly well in the market. It has its firm foundation and is actively competing against Amazon Web Services.
you shouldn't be surprised if it overtakes Amazon Web Services in near future. And then our final contender, Google Cloud Platform, when compared to AWS and Microsoft Azure, is still not that popular, but it's known for its pricing strategies and machine learning and article tools it offers. But other than that, it has a long way to meet up Amazon Web Services and Azure. So guys, every cloud computing platform has its ups and downs, but the best cloud computing platform or the one that's suitable for you usually depends on what you expect from these cloud providers or what kind of services you need from these cloud providers. So I personally prefer AWS, but please do let us know if you disagree or agree with me. If you have any queries, you can post them in the comment section below. Thank you. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!